we're going to talk about z-scores and standard deviation. I'm going to explain a little bit about what standard deviation is, elaborate on what we did in class, and then we're going to talk about z-scores. All right, so we're going to learn about the z standard deviation, z-scores, and empirical rule. This is going to be kind of quick, down, and dirty because of your test next week. I'm not trying to get it in. Okay, so standard deviation is just a measure of how spread out the data is. Okay, so if I have this data and it's, we can look at the spread this way with our mean here, okay, and then the red out is all of our data points. So what one standard, we talked about finding standard deviation, but what it is is it tells us how far away from the center data is. So if I have 45 players and I have a standard deviation of 23.2, one standard deviation is 68.2. So one of these is equal to 68.2. If I add another 23.2, it's going to give me 91, so it's going to come right across the top, above that 90, somewhere in here. Okay. If I go below our mean, so I have the mean of 45, and if I subtract 23.2, I'm going to get 21.8. So everything in here is one standard deviation below. So we can visually look at our data and see within one standard deviation what data points fall in there. Okay, and I said again that the higher the standard deviation is, the more spread out the data is. So this is a pretty large, um, large z-score or standard deviation because we go from 10 to 90. Okay, so it's, it's statistically it's spread out pretty far. What does this all mean? Well, we have this thing that's called a empirical rule that says that 99.7% of all data falls within three standard deviations of the mean, whether it's above or below. So if this is my mean. We call this a normal curve. And it's bell-shaped and if statistically is what we call approximately normal, this is what it looks like. So, and they use this, some places use this S for standard deviation. We use the lowercase Greek letter sigma for standard deviations. So if we were going to use our data from the last thing, last example, our mean was 45 and this would have been 68.2. If I keep adding on, the 23.2 standard deviation, so one standard deviation is 23.2. I'm gonna get 91.4 for two standard deviations. And then, 114.6. Okay, and then if I subtract, I'm going to get 21.8. I'm going to get negative 1.4 and negative 24.6. Okay, now this data doesn't make sense over here in the real life context because it was the number of basketball players. But so most of my data is going to fall between one standard deviation of the mean. All right. So that's kind of just an overview. And I have a video clip that maybe I will show you in class. So we talked about our graphing calculator in class and finding all of this into stat. So according to if we put all of this data into our graphing calculator, we're going to get a mean or that X bar of 12. OK, so here's our mean. And then this is our standard deviation that we use, OK? 
Okay, so it's four point, let's just round it up to 4.3. Okay. We have a z-score, which is equal to one standard deviation. Okay. And there's all kind of interpreting that goes on in statistics with z-scores and standard deviations. And they use this formula right here. And you will actually get this formula on the SOL and on any test or quiz I gave you. Z is equal to a z-score x sub i is just a data point. This little weird looking thing is a Greek letter M, which is the mean. And actually this is mu. It's the lowercase m mu in Greek. Someday when you get in college, you'll know what that all means. You'll know all your Greek letters, some of you. And then we have this lowercase sigma, which is the standard deviation. And we talked a little bit about that in class. Right. And remember that a z-score of 1 is equal to 1 standard deviation. Okay. So let's look at our set of data on a normal curve. So if this was my normal curve, okay, my mean was 12. And if I go with a z-score of 1, it's 16.3 because I we had our mean of 12 and we have our standard deviation of 4 and 3 tenths. Okay, so 16.3, 20.6, 24.9. If we go below by subtracting 7.7, 7, 3.4, and negative zero and nine tenths. Okay, so basically, if I was to go between here and here, 68% of my data is going to lie there. So 68% of my data is going to be in here, or 34% in each part. So 34 and 34. Okay. If I'm going to go out even further, then between there and there, 95% of my data lies. So, here in this little thing, I've got 13.5% of my data. And then how about that guys not only does Mrs. Stroman interrupt me in class but when I'm making my videos all right so this is our normal curve for the data that we have remember that this is one standard deviation above two standard deviations above three standard deviations, and then below. Oops, I made that one a little wrong. Bad sigma, that looks like a P. All right, so if we have this data set, we want to find out how many means are within one, how many scores are within one and a half standard deviations of the mean. So what we have to do is we have to find what data point has a z-score between negative one and a half and one and a half. So remember our formula for z-scores is z-score is equal to the data point minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. So if my z-score is negative one and a half, we need to find the data point. And we know that we were figured out our mean was 12. and our standard deviation was 4.3. So we're the data point minus 12 divided by 4.3. Okay, and to solve that, I gotta multiply both sides by 4.3. Okay, so negative one and a half 
times four and three tenths is negative six and 45 hundredths, and that equals x minus 12, because remember these cancel out and we don't do anything to the top. So now if I add 12 to both sides, I'm going to get x is 5.55. Okay, so that is one of my entries that we're gonna look for, right? If I do it again, I, if I have a positive one and a half equal to x, the data point, minus 12, which is the mean over the standard deviation of 4 and 3 tenths. If I multiply both sides by 4 and 3 tenths, and again, this time I get 6 and 45 hundredths equal to x minus 12, and it's positive this time. And if I add 12 to both sides, I'm going to get 18 and 45 hundredths. So I want to know which data points are going to be between 5 and 55 hundredths and 18 and 45 hundredths. So if I look at my data point, 5 is not between them, 8 is, 12 is, 15, 9, 16, 11, and 12. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 data points that are between negative 1 and a half and positive 1 and a half z-scores. All right, let's look at another example. Right? All right, so now I have a data set with a standard deviation of 2 and a half an element of 16 and a z-score of two and a half and we want to find the mean so we're kind of just manipulating the z-score formula so z is score is equal to the data point minus the mean divided by the standard deviation so what do we know we have a z-score of two and a fourth or two and four tenths we have a data point of 16 we don't know what the mean is, and we have a standard deviation of two and a half. So to solve this, we want to multiply both sides by two and a half. And when we do that, we're going to get six equal to 16 minus the mean. If I subtract 16, I'm going to get negative 10 equals negative mean. Divide by negative 1, our mean is 10th. For those of you who like it over here, remember the symmetric property lets us flip that order sign. So we have a mean of 10 in that data set. Okay. Now I've got a data set with a deviation of 1.8, a mean of 12, and we want to find a z-score for a data point of, and I've got two examples here. So remember our z, again, the data point minus the mean over the standard deviation. So what do I have? I'm looking for the z-score. I have a data point of 15 minus a mean of 12 all divided by a standard deviation of 1.8, 1 and 8 tenths. So if I simplify, 15 minus 12 is 3, divided by 1 and 8 tenths, and so I get a z-score of approximately 1 and 7 tenths. So remember, that is above our mean because it's positive, and it's a little more than one and a half standard deviations above our mean. Let's look at 10 for 10. Our z-score is 10 minus 12 divided by the mean, the standard deviation of 1.8. So our z-score is negative 2 divided by 1 and 8 tenths. And that's going to give me negative 1.1 approximately. 
So if we had our normal distribution, okay, with a mean of 12, and one standard deviation is going to be 13.8 above, and then this 2 would be 15.6. If we subtract below is 10.2 and subtract again, I'm just going to go two standard deviations is 8.4. So my first data set of 15 is somewhere in here and my second one of negative 1.1 is going to be in here. Okay. Let's look at another example. A set of data has a standard deviation of 1 and 4 tenths. If you know what a, that a data point has a z-score of negative 75 hundredths, what's the mean? So once again, we're just manipulating this formula. The data point minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. So I know the z-score is negative 75 hundredths. I know that it has a standard deviation of 1.4 and actually we don't have, I need to give us a data point, so let's give us a data point of 13, lucky number 13. So if I do 13 minus mu, okay, let's multiply both sides by 1.4. By the way, I know that this is not on your notes, but just a couple more examples. So this is negative one and five hundredths when I multiply, equal to 13 minus the mean. So if I subtract 13 from both sides, I'm going to get negative 14.05 and negative mean, so I get a negative, or I get positive mu or mean is 14.05. Okay. So, standard deviation is how far our data is from the mean. The larger the standard deviation, the more spread out the data is. One z-score equals one standard deviation. I don't know why that sign is there. The larger the z-score, the further it is from the mean, and a negative z-score falls below the mean. I'll see you in class. Have a great day.